Hello and welcome to Being Becca Live. Uh, I am Becca Laurie Hector. So welcome, you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you for joining me once again for Being Becca Live. Um, I just finished up with the Unit One group coaching call with everybody. Um, I am so happy to be teaching this again. I miss teaching this. I love seeing people's lives begin to change and their thought pattern patterns begin to correct a little bit and things like that. Um, I'm, I just love teaching it. It really, it's like my everything. I love it. Um, anyway, so here we are on live stream um, where we talk about the challenges of being an autistic adult alive right now um, and uh, not when research catches up. Hey, okay. So here we are. Hey, Bernard. And we have some stuff to talk about. So you guys, tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Tazzy Morgan. Um, uh, we have a day. We, I have a day tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm flying back to New York tomorrow and it is loaded, ladies and gentlemen. I am um, anxious and excited and um, I don't know, wary and a whole bunch of other things that I can think of, um, but I'm having a struggle bus. So um, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about, I don't know how exactly I want to talk about. I want to talk about autistic overwhelm, I guess. That's what I want to call it, autistic overwhelm. Um, and recently, Joe, I don't know if you're watching or you're going to catch this after, but recently we just talked about overwhelming group a little bit about how we can get so overwhelmed and then we have a meltdown and then we, things continue to go bad and blow, and it's like a, like a boulder rolling down the hill right? Is how it feels, you know, or actually more accurate. It's like a snowball rolling down the hill and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as it rolls, right? Um, well, I am not um, immune to such things. And hey, Burnett, and uh, I am also someone with autism and someone who gets overwhelmed. And um, this week, I am so the tail end of last week. I have really been in it, you guys. Um, so I'm, I'm flying to New York tomorrow with Antonio. And of course, my whole attitude about the thing is I, I freak out up until the point where like you're at the airport and you get on the plane. Because at that point, like all control is gone. At that point, if you forgot something at home, it's too late. If you forgot to do something, it's too late. If, you know, whatever, it's too late. There's literally nothing you can do at that point. But leading up until that moment, I am a nervous wreck because I realized in talking to a friend yesterday that it's not the just ordinary overwhelm, right? Because what happens when you're preparing to go away or preparing for some big thing, right, is that life doesn't stop just because you need to prepare for some thing. Right. So here I was feeling like, oh, my house is a mess. I have to clean it because my friend is coming to pet sit and I can't have a dirty house. And I have to make sure I have all the things for the animals and we're going to have to pack. And I don't know what we're going to pack in and what are we going to take? What are we planning on doing? What's the weather going to be like? And then all of this stuff. Right. But at the same time, life is just happening. Right. So I still have to go to work. I still have meetings. I still have to get up and feed the dogs three times a day. I still have to do all of these regular life things. Right. And now there's this added layer of stress and things to worry about. So as someone who's anxious about travel, anxious about change, anxious about leaving home, anxious about flying, anxious about seeing the people I'm going to see in New York, anxious about all of the feelings that are going to come up when I go there, about um, all of this list of things, right? Yeah, overwhelmed. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed. Um, and for me, that overwhelm turned into like, mini sets of panic attacks, right? So I was in overwhelm, in overwhelm. And then if I stopped and thought about all these things for too long, poof, panic attack, like real hardcore, really fast and really short. Cause I'd be like, oh, I'm giving myself a panic attack like that. You know, like you have this, oh, and if you get them, you know, that's what's happening. So you're like, oh, this is a panic attack. And it doesn't make it feel any less scary. It's very visceral feeling anyway, but there's this separate awareness that it's a panic attack that's happening and, and that kind of stuff. And I was like causing myself panic attacks because I have so much to worry about. Um, and so at a certain point, 
last week, I realized that I had reached nusbuns, that I was nearing meltdown. I was having like little, little quiet mini melts to myself and um, that I was feeling overextended. And um, there is not much that I could do about it. This is one of those scenarios when you just, you can't really do anything about it. Like it, it has to, ha like, I still have to do all of those things. They actually have to happen. I actually have to do all of this stuff still. And so um, with the panic attacks on board. Um, so to say that it's been exhausting, to say that it has been um, overwhelming is um, really just like, not enough because that's how it feels. And so fortunately I, you know, I'm very open and authentic in the way that I work and the people that I work with. And so I was able to say to people because I had reached a point where I literally, I was like non-functional and I couldn't have like meetings. Okay. So I had to cancel meetings. And fortunately I do surround myself with good people and I am honest and forthright. And so I was able to say to people like, look, you know, I'm traveling next week. I have all this stuff on my plate on top of the things that I regularly do. And, um, it's given me a little bit of panic. And so I don't have the spoons or the concentration even was really what it was not even the spoons. It was like, I wouldn't be able to focus. It would be like a worthless meeting. Like it didn't even happen. And so I had to kind of you know, be real and honest with myself and say, I just, I can't, I got to like lighten the load just a little bit. Um, and with that came a great conversation with Antonio. And so we have made it almost to leaving day. <laughs> so we leave tomorrow early afternoon, our flight leaves. So we have to get there to the airport. We, and I live like an hour, an hour and a half away from the airport. So I'm be leaving in the morning. Um, and, you know, we'll be leaving the house. And of course, I will be um, sad because I cry every single time that I leave my animals because my brain does what it does. And it goes, well, what if the house sets on fire while you're gone back and you survive, but all of your animals are gone? Right. And that's like, I would rather die in that fire than have to come home to that. And so I leave and I have no control over whether it's going to happen or not. And so I just leave with this um, sadness and I cry. I'm usually for the first half hour, I feel very guilty for leaving. So I cry in the car. Fortunately, Antonio is used to it at this point and he just holds my hand and lets me cry. Um, but I know it's coming and um, they will do all kinds of cute, sad things when they see the suitcases come out and all of that stuff. And I will be heartbroken. Um, and then we will get to the airport and there will be the sensory overload and all of that stuff layered on top of sometimes the fact that we have to wear a mask everywhere and all of this crap. So I have to wear a mask this entire flight, which I am not looking forward to. Um, and just so much other stuff. And I just wish that maybe it's not about autistic overwhelm this episode. Maybe it's about autistic travel is what I feel like saying. Like, I wish that the people that we're going to visit and I wish that the people I will see while I'm there and I wish that the people on my planes and my stewardesses um, and all of that could understand, could know the level of anxiety, the level of stress, the level of work that I have to put in just to get to the airport before the trip has even begun, just to get to the airport, I am spoon spent. What am I supposed to do when I get there, right? I mean, that's how it feels. And I just wish, you know, I know other people are afraid to fly and I know all of this stuff, whatever. And I, I will push through it. I do it for work. I do it all the time. But I just wish on the other end of it, on the receiving end of it, there is some appreciation for the amount of work that it takes to get there and the amount of money that it takes to get there too. But the work, really. Um, and so I, I know you guys are saying, right? The, we all have the experience with it. Yep, we all do. And everyone, yes, Gabby's like, please, travel is so hard. It is. And I, I know that I know that I'm not exempt. I know that neurotypicals also struggle with travel and they have their own worries and concerns. But I have been, the work going into leaving for this trip started in the summer. Okay. I just started thinking about it back then because I had to buy tickets when I could afford them back then. Right. And so this is months of work, <laughs> like leading. Right. And I just 
I wish it was appreciated on the other end. I wish it was understood on the other end because they, no one can relieve me of this. That's the piece of it, right? I'm going to have this experience because that's how my brain processes these things. That's who I am as a person. And so it is part of the travel experience for me. Um, but I just wish that some people understood because like some people, you know, I'm afraid to fly. I'm anxious about these things. And they are right. But they have a glass of wine and they're fine to fly or they have a half a pill for, of Ambien or whatever. And they're good to fly or Xanax, whatever. And they can get through the flight. Um, there's no amount of marijuana, Xanax, morphine that will stop my brain from going through this process, right? So I can lighten my load in some ways, right? But I haven't traveled in two years. And on top of it, we've had all this COVID experience between then, right? And I'm not traveling alone, which I find easier because when I travel alone, I just have to manage my anxiety and I don't have to worry about another person. I will be traveling with another person, right? Um, and so it's like, by the time I get home, I don't, I mean, right. Just thinking about that even, and I know I'll make it through and I know it will pass. And I know I will sleep for a couple of days and be tired for that week. And then I'll start to feel back to myself and it'll be over and I will have done it and all of that. Right. I know all of those things. Right. But I'm still tired. Like I'm tired. And I like, I showered this morning and I was like, I'm so fucking tired already. And my day hasn't even started. And I have so much to do today, you guys. I have appointments back to back to back. And in between, I'm doing laundry, right? Breathe. Right? And that's how I feel right now. So I cannot wait to get on the plane because that's when I release responsibility. That is when I just say, like, I don't know, let's just go. We go, we go. The universe will take us. Here we go. Because I can't control those pieces. But up until that point, I can control those pieces. Up until that point, it's all on me. What I remember to pack and don't remember to pack. What I take, don't take. What I leave for the animals, don't leave. How things go. All of that, all of the leading up to it is all on me. Right? And so right now I feel the, the weight of that on me. I, I can feel it in all of myself. And um. I just wanted to talk about that because it's not, this is one of the areas in which you can't teach or habituate the autism out, right? Not that that's what I want to do at all, but you know what I mean? Like that, there's a point where we can do all of the things that I teach in SDL and we can do all of the things that I will teach in Time and Spoons that you, you can do to do this the best way possible, but we cannot eliminate all of it. You just can't. It's who we are, right? It's so a piece of who I am. And I am a preparer. And I know that I do better at things when I'm prepared. And I like to do things well. That's the other thing. I'm not somebody who takes it, you know, like a, you know, eh, if I forget something at home, I'm not that person. I'm like, ah, I forgot that thing. How could I forget? Right? So because that's who I am as a person, I have to honor this preparatory phase, right? Um, and I also have to honor the fact that it's just so fucking exhausting. I am so tired already. And I like, I just want to sleep tomorrow morning. The last thing I want to do is get up, take a shower, grab all my stuff, cry about my animals, go to the airport and deal with people. And yet that is what I must do. That is the last leg of the prep. And then the trip actually begins. And we can talk about the balance of spoons thereafter when I'm living that nightmare, right? But right now, this is where I'm at and all like there and I'm not asked. I don't want anyone to take it away. Right. This is how my brain prepares for a trip. This, and I don't travel a lot. Right. And so and when I travel alone, the routine is slightly different. Right. All kinds of other stuff. Right. Um, and I just wish that on the other side, it was appreciated. You know what I mean? Not that we need fanfare when we arrive, but like, hey, you must be beat. We won't make you decide about what we're going to do while we're here or whatever. Or you're tired. Don't come rush over and say, hi, you just got off the plane. Go to the hotel and sleep. Right. Any, you know, just acknowledgement of, you know, what it takes to get there. But they don't get it. And I don't think most people do get it. Um, or the amount of, of energy and work it takes to get through this prep phase while simultaneously living your daily life, because that's what we're expected to do.
right? I don't get to take a week off before my two weeks vacation to get ready, right? That's not how it works. And I'm not gone for two weeks either, you guys. I'm gone for four days, okay? So for four days, I've had months of prep for four days time. And I just, that's where I'm sitting. And I don't have a judgment about it. I don't have a solution to it because I don't think there is one, right? It's not like I travel every day, so I need a solution because I do it every day. I don't. I travel now. I'm traveling even less than I ever traveled, right? So it's like I need to do what I need to do to, to feel ready to go. And that's important for me, right? And yet exhausting. And I go through this process to travel because, and it should be only because, the thing that I'm traveling for is worth it. And when it doesn't feel worth it, that feels like shit. When people don't acknowledge that you've gone out of your way, it feels like shit. And so I just wanted to say that out loud because the amount of work that autistics have to do in order to travel is not just, oh, I'm nervous of flying. It's not that. Not nervous to fly me. I'm just not. That's not it, right? I am stressed to the max to travel, right? Beyond the help of medication to travel, right? And um, yet I do it. And so, I, like, I wish that I wish I could bottle that up so that the people that I'm going that I end up seeing could understand what I did in order to get to have dinner with them or to see them for five minutes or whatever. Um, but anyway, wishes, hopes, dreams, all of that fun stuff. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Gab. Thank you so much. Thank you for acknowledging it back at me, right? I'm so sick of people and not acknowledging, right? Especially autism difficulty. Yes, right? Like acknowledge. I don't, it's not that I want you to take it away from me because I'm not asking you to fix it. Right. I just want, hey man, thanks for making it. I know you had to do a bunch of shit to get here. I really appreciate it. What? That would blow my fucking mind. That would absolutely blow my fucking mind. I would have a wholly different experience if someone ever said that to me. But it doesn't get said, right? And I just I'm saying it out loud now because I, I gotta get it out of my system because I'm at like the end of this prep thing. Like, I'm done. I just want to get on the fucking plane already. I can't get here soon enough because I just want someone else to be driving for a minute. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm over it. I don't care what I wear. I don't, at this point, I don't care what I take with me. None of it. I am just so ugh, done. And I haven't even left. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Okay. I recognize there's lots of feelings. Sometimes I can calm my thoughts by telling myself that I kind of need the hard process to be fine at the end. I hope your travel goes well. Thank you. And that is it, right? It's acknowledging. It's exactly that, right? I need to acknowledge. I need this process. I have to do these things so that I feel like, you know, I did everything I could to make it go well. I did. I made all the right choices in the leading up. I prepared myself as best as I can. And I need that process. And I'm not selling someone to find it, an easy way around it or to make it go away or any of those things, right? What I just wish is just, I wish that um, we would just on occasion be acknowledged for the extra work that we have to do to live in a society that was not built for us. That's it. Can you sense how like ugh, I am right now about it? I just, you know, you know, and it's not, it's like every day we have to work. It's not like just when I travel, I have to do all this extra work. I just have to do extra, extra, extra work when I travel. Right. And so um, meet us halfway, acknowledge that we do a bunch of shit to get wherever we're at. Acknowledge that likely wherever you're meeting us, we are putting up with shit as you speak to us right? Because we do a lot of work all the time. And no one's asking you, no autistic is saying, change my autism, take it away because of it. We're all just saying, meet us halfway, man. Could you just do a little bit of the work? Or even if you can't do a little bit of the work, because you're just not built that way, that's cool. Could you just acknowledge that I do it, and that it's hard, and you can't do it? And I have to do it. Like where I want that sign. I acknowledge, right? And and thank you. Thank you for doing that for me to get here to this dinner or here to this party or here to this graduation, right? Thank you for doing that. I don't need a gift. I don't need money. I don't need, any, you know, just acknowledge that it wasn't, you know, 
hop on a private plane where all my slaves did my laundry before I packed and all, you know, it's not. And, and so there's work in all that we do as autistics. And right now that's the way the world is. And so we're forced to do that work for your comfort, for the outside world's comfort. Um, and I don't expect any one person to change that. What I do expect is just some kind of acknowledge realization that there's a whole lot of work that I have to do that you don't. Um, or maybe you do too, and you can commiserate. That would be nice too, actually, if you were like, hey, I know how much work you do there because I have to do the same thing. Thank you for doing the work this time, right? I mean, where is that? Where Where is the acknowledgement of what processes through for us to show up and be somewhere? The way, in the like, not just to show up and be somewhere. So not like to go over to your friend's house and hang out and play games or whatever, but like to be somewhere that you had to get dressed for. And it like, do you know what I mean? What, like, like let's commiserate over how much it's up done. If you can't, if you don't have it in you or you do as much work as I do, then just commiserate with me about the work. But like acknowledge that it wasn't, it's not an easy road and that there are things that are hard out there because of the way that the world is built. And that I have to like all of us, not I, that autistics have to jump through hoops on a daily basis to get our basic needs met. And we have to do a lot of extras. And so it's like, you know, just sometimes say you get it or you think you get it or you'd like to get it or just acknowledge it. I don't care. Um, but traveling is fucking hard and I am stressed and I am tired and I cannot wait to get on the fucking plane tomorrow so that I can just hyper-focus. I have stuff that I am working on. You guys, I am working on something on funding for research that is so important to me. I can't even tell you. It is like here, here, here. It is that it's like, uh, it is so important to me. If I get it, I will like pass out and die. And it's not a lot of money, but it's the beginnings of the research into the stuff that I want to do for SDL. N the research that we need to prove that autistic quality of life is different. Okay. And that's what I'm working. And I have a whole proposal that is due October 22nd. And I will be on that plane hyper-focusing and working on that with absolutely no guilt. Right. But I will be exhausted. And I have chosen all of these things, but it's really nice when somebody just goes, hey, man, that sucks. Or, hey, man, that was tough. Or, I get it. Or, thank you for doing all that. Um, just acknowledge us, man. All right. That's what I got for you today. I don't know. Um, it's sort of just a vent on my part. But I think what, you know, we do all the work. And, it, and if we're not going to get met halfway, then at the very least, acknowledge that we do all the work. Right? If, if you're not going to meet us there because um, you don't find yourself capable of. And I'll tell you, most, I would say, you know, they just don't have the practice neurotypicals to ever um, understand the autistic shoes. They don't have that practice. We, however, have to go out and mask all the time. And so because we're like practiced in the translation. So some people just can't, but they don't have to. You could just acknowledge, you don't even have to know the specifics of it. Just know that getting anywhere is extra work for an autistic person and acknowledge it and say thank you. That means more to us than anything else. Having somebody just validate our experience um, is like birthday, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all of them stuck together, right? Um, they say we have empathy. Yes, Bernard says they say we have empathy deficits. No, we don't. No, we don't. Um, oh, I'm bleeding over there. Did you just see that, you guys? I don't even know where that came from. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I, I, that's what I have to say. I am leaving for travel tomorrow. I'm sure I will have more things to talk about when I return. I will be doing Growing Gratitude from New York. So if you join me on Sunday, I will likely be, I will be somewhere cool in New York or my hotel room. Um, and I will surely have things to be grateful for by the time I get there. Um, and so um, I look forward to talking to you guys then on Sunday for Growing Gratitude. And then, of course, I'll be back next Wednesday with the next Being Back Alive. And I will be back here in Colorado. And we will talk about more of this stuff. But for the moment, I want to say to you guys, I acknowledge the work that you do to get everywhere, right? I say thank you for whatever it took for you to get here on live stream and be with me live. 
and have a conversation with me. I thank you for watching it on replay and giving spoons to that. Um, because wherever you were, whatever day you had, you chose to make me a part of it. So thank you. And thank you for all the work that you do, even when you shouldn't do all the work to keep neurotypicals comfortable, right? I mean, they should be grateful. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for um, all the times that you have been uncomfortable for someone else's comfort. I thank you for that. Um, that's the work that we do every day. And if no one else is going to acknowledge our hard ass fucking work, I will. Congratulations, you guys. You bust a hump every day to wake up. And if you got somewhere today, I know how hard you worked, right? I am exhausted. I have not left the house yet. I still have to, right? There is work to be done that we do. And it goes unnoticed. I notice. I see you. I see you. And I know intimately the work that you are doing. Intimately. So thank you for that. I appreciate you appreciate you guys. I love that you took some time and spoons to spend with me today to talk about or hear me talk about that thing. Um, and it's really amazing to know that you guys always, like, no matter what I'm experiencing, when I share it here, it feels safe. And so thank you for accepting all of my weird ways of processing all of it and um, all of my random topics. But Today felt, it felt important. It was the thing that was here. And I had another thing to talk about that was back here, but because this was right here, I was like, I'm gonna fucking talk about it because I can't, I can't sit with it anymore. Um, yeah, so that's it, you guys. Um, oh, I know what I have to tell you. The registration is now open for the October seminar. October seminar will be on time and spoon management. Um, and we will be talking about how intimately connected those two things are and how we can go about starting to take control of where we spend them. Um, and so we'll be talking about that in Time and Spoon Management on October 27th at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, it will be recorded. So if you can't make the live time, fear not. If you register, you will automatically get the recording. Um, so don't worry about that. And if you head over to bacalori.com, that's L-O-R-Y.com, you can find the Self-Defined Living Seminar Series tab. Click on that, scroll down through all the old ones to the one on the bottom, and you will find Time and Spoon Management. Um, right now, for this week, I am doing a reduced price. If you go right now and register, you will get it for 20 bucks. Um, so that is only going to be going on until the, uh, the 20th of October. So if you register between now and October 20th, you will get it for 20 bucks. Um, and then the price goes back up to 25. So um, if you'd like to register, please head over there right now. If you know somebody that you think could benefit from this, please email them the link. Um, I think it's something that we need to talk about because it is the key to us being able to sustain things instead of just surviving through things. Um, yeah, so I hope you'll join me for that. That registration is open right now. And of course, Self-Defined Living is running right now live. So the recordings of that will be out for the winter. And then of course, I'll be returning in the spring to teach it again. So you are welcome to email me to get on that wait list now and guarantee yourself a seat for the spring cohort of Self-Defined Living. Um, that's about all I've got for you guys today. Um, I really needed to get that off my chest. So thank you for being a safe space that I can really just put it out there the way that I hear it in here. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Get out there and seek joy, create joy and share joy, all the joys. And I will be back here on Sunday for Growing Gratitude and then next Wednesday for the next Being Back Alive. I'll see you guys out and about on the interwebs. Until then, your thumbs up mean everything to me. Your shares mean even more. Your subscriptions even more than that. Um, and I truly appreciate you guys joining me, watching and everything. Please share your comments with me and your thoughts on this topic. I'd love to hear from you guys, even if it's just venting along with me. Feel free to vent along with me. Um, I would love just to know that I'm not alone in it. Yeah, it makes us feel just a little bit better. Yeah, so that's what I've got for you today, guys. Thanks so much for joining me and being back alive. I will see you on Sunday. Bye.